guys, Anna here. Um, I'm gonna quickly do a belly shot and then we'll get into my week 27 update. So, here it is. My 27 week belly. It's getting big. <laughs> and I feel like I'm carrying low, but yeah, there it is. Sorry about the mess in the back. Um, yeah, we have a lot of stuff going on, so that's all. Yeah. Laundry and then um, other stuff. We're getting an air conditioner and heater in our master bedroom. Anyway, so let's jump into week 27. I'm 27 weeks and two days today. I had a midwife appointment right after I filmed my last update. And she immediately told me that I'm taking way too much iron. Um, she said, yes, I'm anemic, but the amount of iron that I was taking would be like if I was dying from anemia. <laughs> so <clears throat> I told her that I was happy that she mentioned that because um, I've been having major issues with iron. I showed you guys before that they told me to take 325 milligrams twice a day of iron. Um, almost immediately, like within 24 hours, I started feeling so sick. My husband immediately, well, I would say probably the second time I took it, he was like, that's, that's too much. That's too many pills to be taking. And I was like, but that's what they told me. And they said I was anemic and, you know, it's important for me to keep my blood count up and I'm pregnant and all that stuff. And... So that went on for another day, and then I um, sort of got fed up taking, excuse me, taking the pills, and he looked up um, how much a normal dosage is for pregnant ladies, and how much a normal amount of iron to take when you're just anemic and you're not pregnant, and they said that the upper limit is about 40? 40 milligrams. They said once you reach 60 milligrams, you start seeing organ failure. And um, yeah, <laughs> and young children especially um, can die pretty quickly from taking too much iron. So I was freaking out that I was hurting myself and the baby and I just had a complete meltdown and my husband was so good about everything. He called poison control. They were absolutely no help to him at all. Um, they asked us how much iron we told them. They said, um, well, how much of the elemental iron is in that brand? And it didn't say on the bottle. So we told her that we didn't know. And she just said, I can't help you. <laughs> so I, I was like, this is not okay. I also had an upset stomach from some bad food that I had. So I was also like, nothing was really staying in my system that long. I feel like that's sort of a mixed blessing because although I felt horrible and my stomach was super upset and I was running to the bathroom all the time, um, that probably um, is what saved my baby's life and what made me not actually OD on iron. Um, we ended up calling the uh, OB's office, and they told us to call the on-call nurses because it was way after they had closed. And so we called the OB or the labor and delivery nurses that were on call, and they said, "Stop taking it immediately. Don't take another dose until you talk to the doctor that prescribed it." So I called that doctor and. Um, told them what was happening and they said we don't have any nurses here to talk to you about it so just wait for a phone call <clears throat> so I did I waited all day I called them right at 801 <laughs> in the morning as soon as they opened and then I didn't get a phone call until 3 in the afternoon and the lady said oh you were supposed to take iron that actually says 65 milligrams equivalent to 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate iron. And I said, oh, I had no idea. I just had this iron 
in the cabinet, didn't know there were different types of iron out there and what was safe and yeah. And she's like, I'm sorry you had to go through that. <laughs> and yeah. And then I, I also said, um, I read online that it interferes with my levothyroxine. And she said, oh, it does. Yeah, you can't take them, like you have to take them at opposite times of the day. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And do you guys have my chart there? Do you guys know what I'm taking? And she's like, yeah, we have all of your records, what prenatal you're taking and what vitamins you're taking. And so I was like, so the first person that called me just didn't care to talk to me about how they interact with other things and <laughs> all this other stuff. So I told my uh, midwife that and she said, don't take that much iron. You don't need uh, 325 twice a day. If you must, and you went out and bought the correct dosage and the correct bottle, um, just take it once a day. Uh, right before bed is fine. You could also switch to Floridex, Floridex um, iron, which is a liquid iron. It smells horrible. My friend's taking it right now, and it smells nasty. Um, it's also pretty spendy. Um, so, yeah. And, and so she, she likes the Floridex a lot, Floridex a lot, but I'm going to just take one pill of my iron. That is the correct dosage. <sighs> and then never go see those doctors again. And I tried to get, I had an appointment with that doctor and I tried to get it moved um, to a different doctor that's closer to my house. And they told me I couldn't. And then I told my OB that. And they said, you have to talk to your OB about moving appointments. You can't schedule it through us. And then I talked to my OB about it. And they said, that's wrong. You, we can't schedule an appointment through them. They have to be the ones that schedule that sort of thing. Um, that was outside of our realm. And so I finally got it worked out and I have another appointment and it's, I think on the 28th or 29th, um, of this month for, I think my last like high risk appointment. And I don't need to be seeing a high risk doctor at all. Um, I'm not high risk and there are no issues. So I don't really know why they even wanted to see me. Anyway, so there's that. Um, my midwife also gave me the paperwork to get my glucose test. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I got it done this morning and it was the orange um, thing. And I think it's called Orange Crush or like glucose crush. Um, so I posted a picture on my Instagram. Yeah, it's called Gluco Crush. <laughs> There's the picture I posted. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, so I haven't got the results back. It wasn't horrible tasting. It was almost like a very sweet Powerade, Gatorade type drink. Like it was thin. And I thought since it was so sweet, it was also going to be syrupy, but it wasn't. And I drank that thing in like less than 60 seconds. <laughs> I mean, I like chugged back a quarter of it at a time, but I like got it down within 60 seconds and I was like, good, I'm done um, with that. And I should be getting my results. If they're abnormal, I will get them uh, soon. If they are completely normal, probably won't get a phone call um, or anything. And I see my midwife next week, so not a big deal. Okay, moving on to some really sad news. My brother's girlfriend um, was 26 weeks pregnant last week, and she actually had a stillbirth. Um, yeah, it was really hard. I, the baby wasn't formed correctly as well, so I feel really bad for her because she had to give birth and then also um, see uh, the baby, uh, and all of the issues that physically the baby had, um, would be too much. I, I couldn't even imagine going through that. I mean, it's bad enough losing a baby and a child and a pregnancy, 
but having to see that it just, it wasn't a healthy growing fetus, um, that would just be too hard. Um, so I feel really bad for her loss. Um, and yeah, so I just want to touch on that and then I'll, I'll move on. My, uh, midwife gave me some paperwork for childbirth classes. I know I talked about doing childbirth classes maybe last week, maybe I didn't. Um, I want to do like a Bradley Method class, but they don't really offer that here. Um, I wanted to do a birthing from within, uh, class, but they don't do that here. So I would have to drive about two hours um, if I wanted to do the five-week class or six-week prep class. Um, that's, that's a lot of driving for one night. My husband would have to get off early, drive two hours, have the class that's probably about one hour, and then drive two hours back. So four hours of driving a night for five to six classes. Um, I talked to my midwife about that, and she said, you're more than welcome to do that if you feel like it's necessary. Um, she knows that I've been reading Birthing from Within, Hypnobirthing, uh, which I stopped reading, and the Bradley Method, uh, Husband Coached Childbirth books, and she's like, I feel like you're well aware of what's going to happen. <laughs> um, so you may not find those classes useful because they might not actually be, um, it might be pretty much a book overview and not really an in-depth what you think you're getting out of the class. Um, so I think what we're going to do is read the books, go to the classes that are offered here, which is basically um, a hospital tour and they do have a vaginal delivery uh, video that they show um, and I don't think my husband has ever seen a vaginal delivery before um, not since like high school when you had to take the health class and it showed a vaginal birth and everybody's like ah <laughs> um, so I think that that's what we're gonna do is do that and then also um, I've seen the business of being born a hundred million times but I've never seen it while I was pregnant and so I plan on watching it again and um, making my husband sit down and watch it with me and that has a few um, live births in it so yeah I'm really excited about that I think that's gonna be our prep um, reading all the books watching women do it in successfully um, yeah, and just hopefully that'll give me the courage to do it. Uh, the nursery. So this past week I was in Denver, Colorado, and um, there's an Ikea <laughs> really close to Denver. So we went and bought a bunch of pine furniture, and I will show you a picture um, of the furniture before we even touched it. So we bought a big case like that, or case, dresser, and then we also bought a three drawer dresser, it's really short, and then we painted it all up, and it looks amazing, I'm not going to show you the after products until we get our decorations up, um, we bought shelving, and we bought like an organizational thing in the closet, and organizational things for in the drawers, um, and this really cool clock that looks like a keyhole. Um, which is pretty neat, and it has storage inside too, so I like anything that I can also store stuff in. <laughs> so, yeah, we got, we came home, started assembling furniture that night, which, I mean, we're like six hours away, so we drove all day, and then, um, he, my husband, Doug assembled all of the furniture and did all the heavy lifting and everything, and then I just painted with a mask. I, I wear like the ventilator mask and I can't smell anything with it. So it's awesome. Um, with the windows open and everything and we got it all done yesterday, put it all together, uh, rolled out the rug, still waiting on a few things, crib, rocker, a little bit of decorations. Um, and then we're done. So I'm really excited. And 
uh, it was Ikea furniture, so it was really cheap. Like, the dresser was $150, um, and we custom painted it in a very cool way. Uh, can't wait to show you guys. And that would have cost us upwards of $900 probably to, to actually get it the way we wanted it. And then the dresser was $35. And then we did the custom paint job. So I, I think we saved a bunch of money and I'm happy with it. Um, when we were at the hardware store here in town, I live in a super small town. I don't know many people because I'm not like super active in the community, but I saw this random girl. She was a cashier at the hardware store. Um, not girl. She was an older woman, maybe in her 60s, 70s. And uh, I had seen her once before, but I've never actually talked to her. She said, and I was just buying paint, not even gender specific pink baby anything paint. And she looks at me and she says, when's the baby due? And I was totally caught off guard. I looked at what I was buying, paint liners and paint. And I was like, what? What is she talking about? And then I realized I look crazy pregnant. <laughs> so it dawned on me, like, I actually look pregnant now. I don't look overweight, ate an extra breakfast burrito, nothing. I actually look pregnant. Um, I've never thought that I would actually get here. <laughs> so I feel absolutely amazing. And I was giddy, like, after she asked me and I told her, oh, it's due in April, sorry. <laughs> um, she asked me if it was twins, like she was joking around with me and it didn't even offend me because I was like, I don't care if I'm huge. I look pregnant, I look pregnant, me. Um, so I was just like super on cloud nine, random person asked me if I was pregnant, which by the way, I would never do, like even if they were wearing a huge maternity shirt that said like baby on board I would feel weird <laughs> asking someone if they're pregnant or when they're due or whatever just because I would hate it to be like oh I'm wearing this shirt ironically <laughs> or like something where they're not pregnant I yeah it would be too much for me <laughs> so but I was super happy that she did <laughs> and totally made my day yeah, so that is my 27 week update and my belly bump. And that's it guys. I hope you guys have a great week and I will be uploading actually a beauty video um, probably uh, later this week because my husband bought me an Ipsy bag, Ipsy subscription whole year um, for uh, Christmas. So I plan on giving you an actual review of the products that they send you instead of just showing you what's in my Ipsy bag. All right. Love you guys. Bye.